In this video, I'm going to show you how to install and run this CrewAI project, which as you can see right here, is already going to include a front end to display your CrewAI results. I'm going to provide you with the code from my own GitHub repository, and I'm going to show you step by step what you need to do in order to get this project to run. I'm also going to show you how to set up your API keys. And if you've never worked with API keys before, I'm going to show you what parts of what websites you need to go in order to request them and retrieve them. And what's really cool about this project is that it's already set up to work not just with ChatGPT 3 and 4, but also with Grox LLMs, including Llama 3 and Mixtrel. We're not going to be talking too much about the code or too much about the technical aspects of this project. Because again, the point of this series is to get you to a place where you can install and run your own CreAI project so that you can start editing, so that you can start creating your own projects, and really so you can start learning about AI agents by working with them yourself. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to our GitHub repository, and we're going to download the code for this project to our machine. The way you're going to do this is you're going to go to code right here on this green button. Then you're going to go ahead and set a copy to clipboard. After this, we're going to go to our VS code. And here we're just going to use the git clone command. And that's just git clone. And then here we're going to paste the link that we just copied. After that, simply press enter. And just like that, we're able to download the code for the project. And now to view the files for this project, just click up here, open, or you can click here on the left, open folder. And then you're going to select the folder called multiple model crew. That's just the folder name for the project that we just downloaded. And you're going to click open on VS code. So you can see here on the left, these are all the files for the project that we downloaded. Just a heads up, if you're close and need to open your terminal again, just go up here to terminal, new terminal. So now what we're going to do is we're going to download and install all of the dependencies needed to run this project. So when you think of dependencies, simply think of code that we're using from other libraries or from other open sources that we're going to leverage in order to create our project. If you click here on the pyproject.tml file, you're going to see a list of different things that are being referenced. These are the dependencies that are needed in order for the CreAI project to work properly. So the way we're going to install these is going to be with our poetry command. And the command is simply poetry install dash dash no dash root and when we run that command what that's going to do is it's going to download all of those dependencies all of those packages with that specific version that we annotated here in order to run this crew ai project now just a heads up you're going to see an error that says cannot install PySQL light binary that's not something to be worried about that's something i had to adjust in order to get our .tml file to work with part of the project where we deploy our crew ai project online but this particular error isn't going to interfere with when you run your project on your machine so the other thing that is specified through this poetry file is the python version that we're going to be running now in this particular tutorial, we didn't actually install Python in our computer. This was actually done through the poetry dependency management. And the way we're going to be able to access those things that were installed by the poetry command is going to be using this command called poetry shell. So when you run the poetry shell command, you basically now have access to that environment that was created with poetry with all those dependencies that it downloaded on that particular folder. So now that we downloaded our project, we downloaded all of our dependencies. We're inside the poetry environment that was created. We can now run our project. So let's go ahead and do the command for that. And the command is just going to be streamlit run and then the name of the streamlit file that we have here, streamlitapp.py. And then you're going to press enter. And this is going to open up this new browser window. And pretty much here, you can see that your app is going to open up. Now here, I'm already able to use my project the way that it's supposed to be used because I've already set up my API keys. But if you look closely to some of the files in here, particularly the streamlit app file, you can see that there's references to the API key names, but there's actually no API key values in there. The reason why my project still runs, even though my API keys aren't typed in here, is because I've stored these in my machine in a secrets file. So I'm actually going to delete that so I can walk you through how you're going to set up your API keys on your project. And if you use the same formatting for other projects later on, you pretty much won't have to enter your API keys anymore. As you can see here in our finder window, inside our users, username, there's a folder called .streamlit. This folder gets created the first time you run streamlit. In here, I have this file called secrets.toml. And if we open our secrets.toml file, you can see here that all it has stored is the names of your API keys and of course the API key values. Obviously I deleted mine on here, but this is just for you to see how simply formatted this file is. So I'm actually going to delete this just so I can walk you through the error that you're going to get the first time you run your streamlit project. And two, I'm actually going to show you step-by-step -step how you can request these API keys for yourself. So we're actually going to start our project one more time using the streamlit command that we used earlier. And because we don't have our API key set up, this is the error that you're going to get. The main error being that there's no path for that secrets.toml file. And here it's giving you the directory of where it's expecting to find this file. The way you're going to find this folder is starting from the root directory. You're going to go to the user that you're working on. And then here is where you're going to be able to see that .streamlit folder. 
You might not see it at first because this is a hidden file. The way you can view this is just you're going to click Command Shift and then the period button. So from here, you can see all of the hidden directories and we're going to look for the one that says .streamlit. And this folder is where we're going to place our secrets.toml file with our API key values inserted in it. And we can actually just create our file on VS Code and then transfer it over. So here on VS Code, just right click on an empty space, click new file, and we're just going to call this secrets.toml. And if you don't want to make any mistakes spelling this, just go to your streamlit app.py file. And here you can see exactly how these are supposed to be spelled. So we have our OpenAI API key, all capitals, no spaces, equals, and then two double quotations. Same thing here, all capital, grok with a Q, API key. And then the next API key we're going to need is going to be serper API key. So now that we have our secrets.tml file, and you know exactly where you're going to place it once we get our API keys, I'm going to walk you through the websites you need to go to and how you can request these API keys. And of course, I'll be sharing all these links with you in the description and in the Notion document attached. So the first API key is going to be the OpenAI one. And the way you can get this is going to be in platform.openai.com. So here, just click login. If you already have a ChatGPT account, and if you don't, just click sign up. Once you sign in, you're going to go to settings. And in this menu that you're going to get, you're going to go to building. So the first thing you're going to need to do in order to make sure that your API key works for OpenAI is going to be to add a balance to your account. You're basically going to be adding some credits for what you get charged once you start making these API requests. The reason why I'm mentioning this is because when I start working with this API, even though I had a payment method already saved to the account, I noticed that my API keys were not working. This was because I hadn't added any balance to my account. Like I was saying, you kind of just prepaying for a credit balance for the things you're going to use on this account. Once you do that, you're going to go to this left panel again, and you're going to click where it says API keys. If you just set up your account for the first time, you're going to be asked to verify it through email. There's just going to be a big green button here that says verify account. You're just going to click that. You're going to get an email and that's how you verify it. Very simple. Then here, all you need to do is go to create new key. You can call it whatever you want test key. And again, that's just for your reference and you're going to hit create key. So as you can see here, it's telling you that you're not going to be able to view it again. And I know most of you know this, but for those of you that are starting to work with this kind of technology, I just want to emphasize, even though when I'm done recording this video, I am just going to delete this key. You can see here that I still go out of my way to block them. The reason why I do that is because I don't want you to undermine how important it is to keep sensitive data like this secure. At the end of the day, an API key is basically a password that ties your account and your account's activity to the access that you're being granted to open AI services. And like any other password, it's not something you want other people to be able to use on your behalf. Once you copy it, just go to your secrets.toml file and we're going to paste it on here. I'm just going to type this is where you paste it because also I don't want to be spending too much time editing this either. And great, now you have access to your OpenAI API keys. So now we're going to get access to the Grok API keys. So Grok is going to be useful if you're trying to use different models such as Llama 3 or Mixtral or Google's open source Gemma. And also one of the cool things about the Grok API key is that you're going to be able to use these models for free. There are some limitations with that, but we'll talk about that in a second. First, I'm going to show you how you can get this API key. So once you sign up, because you do need to make an account with Grok, you're going to click here where it says more. You're going to go to support, and that's going to take you to this page where it just gives you more information about the company. Here you can click API access on the left part of the menu. And here you're going to click where it says playground on Grok Cloud. Once you go to that page, you simply go here to API keys. And similar to the menu we saw before, here is where you can generate your API keys. Again, you're going to hit create and you're going to paste it on this section of your secrets.toml file and save it. So what I was mentioning earlier, even though the large language models provided by Grok are free, there are some limits on what you can do with them. You are limited at the requests per minute that you can make, meaning that if you go over these 30 requests within one minute, you are going to be timed out until a minute after the last one passes. The other thing that has some limitations is going to be these tokens per minute. So the way you can look at this, if you don't want to get too technical with it, is the more text that is processed within your request, the quicker you're going to be using up these tokens. And just like the number of requests you can make per minute, there's also limitation in the amount of text that you can process within one minute with your requests. Now, within the project that you're downloading, I've already included some safety guards to make sure to try and limit the amount of times or how frequently the project will fail if you're using the Grok API keys. Basically, I kept the agent definitions and the task descriptions pretty short. And also, I limited the amount of iterations that an agent can use in order to complete its task. But we'll talk a little bit more about that towards the end of the video. And the last API key we're going to request is going to be the Serper API key. Now, what Serper does is 
basically, instead of you having to go to google.com and type in your search query and getting the results on a web page, Serper allows you to use API requests to send and receive the results from Google requests. Now, there are other tools that you can use, such as DuckDuckGo, and I'm sure I've heard of some other open source tools, but I really like the way this one works. It's very responsive. It works very fast. And one of the things I like about it too is that when you sign up, you get free credits right off the bat and you don't even have to put any payment information. So I think that makes it pretty easy. So once you sign up, you're going to see this dashboard here. And all you have to do is go to this API key section. And again, this is where you're going to have your API key, which you can just copy. And now you're going to paste that in here. And again, once you add it to your secrets.tml file, you're going to go ahead and file save or command S. And one more thing, make sure that there are no spaces where there shouldn't be for your API key. Make sure you're not adding a space after the quotation or before the last quotation. Make sure you didn't delete any characters by accident, because again, any little difference within the values for your key is going to cause an error. It's going to give you an error that says invalid key. So once you're done editing these values, we're going to go ahead and close our secrets html file we're going to right click it here click reveal in finder and remember we want to move it to the streamlit folder right here that we opened earlier which is again it's just in users username and dot streamlit and you're simply just going to drag it on here so i set up mine with the correct api key values and now we're going to restart our project we're simply going to end the one that's currently running because remember when we ran earlier we got this error so it's technically running right now. It just doesn't have access to anything. The way you can stop it is just by clicking Control C on your keyboard. This stops the project and you're back to your command line interface. So let's run our Streamlit command once more. It's just Streamlit run, Streamlit app. We can see the user interface and we're not getting that error that we got previously. And actually let's run our project just to make sure everything's working on it. So one topic off the top of my head that I know I want to research is, you know, how MMA fighters or how boxing fighters, you know, basically promote their fights, how they make money that kind of stuff. So for our main topic, let's put boxing matches. And then for specific questions about it is how do boxers typically promote their fight when they are starting out? What is the most efficient way of doing this? Now, when we look here at the terminal, we can see based on this output that our crew is running and keep in mind, this crew is already set up to search Google, to scrape the web, to analyze web pages again, so that we can get the most up-to-date information on these projects. So now we can see here that our crew finished running and these are the results for our project. And the way I have the output set out for this is basically I want five principles. I want the links to five articles from the internet. And then at the end, I want five book recommendations for the topic I asked for. And just to give you a little context on how my crew is set up is basically I have three agents. The first agent is just, I just call them the expert. So basically they take the input from the original query that I sent, which is where I said boxing and boxing promotion. And their job is to elaborate a little bit further on that request. The reason why I want that is because I don't want to spend too much time prompting on what I want to learn about. I really just want to be able to say one sentence and have, you know, the rest of the crew try and figure out what the important parts, important concepts, important principles about that specific idea or concept are. And this agent in particular does have access to, you know, Google search, web search, and web scraping. The next agent after that basically takes the information from the first agent and they pretty much try and find a way that would be, you know, the best way or the best curriculum in order to learn those concepts. I know here I called them the analyst, but really it's taking the perspective of an expert and bringing it down to the perspective of an educator or rather somebody that can structure content in a way that would be presentable to somebody that wants to be educated in those concepts. The last one is just my technical writer, which takes the output from that second agent and they format it again in that way that you saw with the results, which again, it's five principles, five articles, and five books for recommendations. So like I was mentioning earlier, the way that I was able to get for the Grok LLM models to not crash or to not stop whenever you run your crew using their API key is with this field right here. For each agent that you have in your agents.py file, they all have an attribute or rather a field option that you can fill out called max iter. So max iter just stands for max iterations, which is a reference to the max number of times that an agent can try and resolve the task that you gave them. So typically you don't have to specify this number. And by default, I believe the number at which the agent will stop trying to find the best way to resolve that issue is going to be 25. But remember, if we look at our Grok documentation, the limit is set to 30 requests per minute. Now, once you run your crew, there are multiple queries that have to be done in order to process the input, in order to process the task that's being done, in order for it to try to iterate over it once more. If you don't set this max iterations number to a low number, 
your project is definitely going to cap out on those limits and then your career AI project is just going to crash. So the other feature that is already set up in this project is you can basically switch between whatever language model you want to use, whether it's one from OpenAI's GPT-3 or GPT-4 or one of the ones from Grok, including Llama 3 billion, Llama 3, 70 billion, Mixtral, and Google's Gemma. The only line of code you're gonna have to change in order to do this is gonna be the one that says change your model here and right below it. And this line where it says selected LLM equals after the self dot is where you're gonna change the name of whatever model you want to use. So if you want to use Mixtral, you would just start typing Mixtral and then select the eight times seven B, save it. And next time you restart your CreAI project, all of your agents are going to be using this large language model. Again, because for each agent, it does have this attribute called LLM equals. And within this attribute is where you write out and specify the large language model that you want to use. And just like that, guys, congratulations. You now have a working career AI project running on your computer. Whether it took you a few minutes to complete this, a few hours, or even a few days, I really want to emphasize that there's a lot of value in you going out of your way and putting time into implementing this on your own. Learning new technologies or really just learning new things in general can be pretty scary, can be pretty intimidating. So like I said, you definitely deserve a pat on the back if you're able to complete this and you got this running. And if you're having any problems, let me know in the comments and I'll be more than happy to reply or hit me up through Discord or the Facebook group to see what I can do to help you out with that. I'm also available for free one-on-one -on -one video call consultations if you have some questions about how you're trying to implement your career AI project for your business or for a personal project that you're working on. In the next video, we're gonna take this project, which currently is only running on your computer, and I'm gonna show you how you can deploy it, or rather, host it online so that you can share it with others. Again, that tutorial is also gonna be super beginner friendly. If you don't even know what deployment is, if you've never done anything related to hosting applications online or hosting services online, I'm gonna walk you through it step by step. We're gonna be using a very simple technology through Streamlit Cloud. That way, if your intention is to share this project with other people in your team, or you wanna showcase it to others, once you deploy this project online, you'll be able to access it and use it without needing to run it from your computer. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.